I'm Frank Vincent of The Sopranos. Don't go anywhere because Profiles is coming right up. Pay attention. Welcome to Profiles, I'm Marley Hall. Today's guest is actor Frank Vincent, probably best known for his role as Billy Bats and telling Joe Pesci that famous line, go home and get your shine box in the blockbuster hit movie Goodfellas. Today, Vincent keeps busy with his role as feared New York mob capo, Phil Leotardo, in HBO's award-winning series, The Sopranos. After a short break, we'll join our host, Mickey Burns, as he welcomes veteran actor Frank Vincent to Profiles. Welcome back to Profiles. In the past 30 years, Frank Vincent has starred in movies like Raging Bull, Casino, Do the Right Thing, and Goodfellas. And recently, he's added author to his resume with the release of his debut book, A Guy's Guide to Being a Man's Man, covering topics like dating, food, fashion, movies, and even Las Vegas. Vincent has experience. He's played a man's man in several roles for decades. Let's join our host, Mickey Burns, on location from Ashford and Simpson's Sugar Bar in the heart of New York City as he welcomes actor Frank Vincent to Profiles. Frank Vincent. Yes, sir. Welcome to our show, Profiles. Thank you. It's nice to be here. Honor meeting you. It's an honor meeting you, sir. For our viewers, actor, have graced the uh, television and movie screens for more than 30 years, have starred in such movie classics, Raging Bull, Casino, Do the Right Thing, and of course, Goodfellas where you probably uh, spoke one of the more famous, memorable lines in the history of, of, the, of movies, and which is, go home and get your shine box. I gotta tell you something real quick about that and get it out of the way, because <laughs> anybody who stops me wherever I am, they say, go home and get your shine box. So what I did is I got a picture of Billy Bats, who's the character, sure. put it on a t-shirt, and on my website, frankvincent.com, you can buy Billy Bats, go home and get your shine box t-shirt. Yeah. Or a mug with the same thing on it. And believe it or not, we sell thousands of them. It's amazing. You recently said about that role as Billy Bats and that experience, you said, people tell me that line everywhere I go. You said, I could buy a Mercedes if I had a buck for every time that happened. Is that true? You could buy a new Mercedes. You yeah. could. <laughs> you could. And I was curious, when you first read that script, I mean, you didn't know at that time that this line would become so famous. But when you first read it in the script, you know, what, was your, what were your thoughts when you go well, I, get Well, you know, you, you trust Marty and you trust what you're doing and it, it's, it hit me as a great line and it was just, um, it, you know, when lines are great, they're easy to do. You just find, find the essence of it and you do it. And at that time, you know, Joe and I were very close. Joe mm -hmm. and I did a lot mm -hmm. of played music together and whatever. Right. So it just, it just worked for us because the chemistry was there. Okay. And it was... Uh, classic line, so it's there. Did you think it would stand the test of time? You never know that. You never know. Never you know. Never In know. fact, when Raging Bull came out, it wasn't a hit. It, was, it, was, it did well, but it wasn't a smash hit, so to speak. Today, it's on the top 25 of the century. Raging Amazing. Bull. Amazing. Viewers will also recognize you as the feared New York capo, Phil Leotardo, on the HBO award-winning series, The Sopranos. And, uh, that, that must have been a special experience for you, especially being part of that great cast. Well, I went to see David. I went for the, uh, to audition for David for the pilot. Mm -hmm. I went up with uh, Tony Sirico mm -hmm. and Dominic Chinese. The three of us went together, and they got hired, and I did. Uh, because David, and now in retrospect, says he didn't want to hire me at that time because Goodfellas was too popular, and the character Billy Bats was too known to put him into that mix and it would take away. I can understand that. So two years later, I went back, he called me back to see him, and uh, I went back, and he told Georgiana, find something for Frank. And two years ago, he called me, just said, come in, you start Monday. It was, was like, it. you know, and we did the whole season, the, the old five season, right. and now the right. sixth season. After season one, I had a, the opportunity to speak with uh, Vincent Pastore. And at the time, he, I was asking him, you know, why he's so successful, the show? And he was kind of comparing it to the Westerns of early television. And I said, that's a that's great good. analogy. It is. Do you like that? Yeah, in fact, I spoke to Vincent today. Vincent is, uh, has his own show okay. on Sirius Radio now oh, right. called The Wise Guy Show. 
In fact, we're having the uh, we're launching the book at, at Capital on the seventh. We're launching uh, my book and we're launching a DVD, of this thing of ours. And Vincent's doing the show live, right from Capital down the Bowery. At least I heard some buzz about the show. It's pretty. Well, it's pretty I co-host I co-host it when Vinny's not there. Now, as we mentioned before, season six for The Sopranos, about the premiere. Uh, but one thing a lot of our viewers are curious about is why did it take approximately two years between season five and season six? That's David Chase's way of doing things. And what's going to happen is going to come back in real time from when it stopped. So when you, the last episode in the fifth season was when uh, Johnny Sack gets arrested. Yes. And now it's going to be when the first season, first episode comes out a year and a half later okay. in real time. So things have happened in that, that time span. Interesting. Obviously, a, a man's man never squeals, and the cast of The Sopranos has been very good not to do that. Uh, but what can you tell us about the coming season? It's going to be great. There's a lot of, <laughs> a lot of guest stars. <laughs> and uh, the orders are very simple coming from headquarters. That, again, if we do tell you, then I have to just come and kill you. Something. Yeah, that's it. So yeah, I can't right. tell you. So you can, we have can't to tell wait. you too much. You know, it's good that you don't know too much because yeah. if, if, if we started telling people what's going on, it would be all over the place. And you know what? The edge is gone. I, I agree with the you. The surprise of the show is what's going to happen. I mean, people are sitting there like waiting to see exactly what's going to happen. Sure. And that's what makes it fun. You got everyone's respect, there, you know that. Thanks, John. I mean, I was going to say you dress classy, too, but I don't want you to get a swell head. <laughs> Thanks, John. You know, Paul, he only thought of me as a money machine. It's really good to be treated as a friend. Hey, you are a friend. We all remember Frank Vincent's character being murdered by Joe Pesci's character in the movie Goodfellas. Well, did you know that five years later in the movie Casino, Vincent got his revenge? In that film, he got to murder Pesci's character. We'll be right back with much more on Profiles after these important messages. Welcome back to Profiles. I'm Marley Hall. Before acting, Frank Vincent made his living as a professional musician, and at one point he had his own band. And in the late 60s, he hired a guitar player by the name of Joe Pesci. The two would go on to make beautiful music together, and not just in the band. They would eventually become actors and co-star in numerous hit feature films. Now back to Mickey Burns with the talented Frank Vincent. You're also currently celebrating the release of your, your book, which is, has been doing great. It's called A Guy's Guide to Being a Man's Man. As busy as you are, why did you write the book? Well, I always, I always felt I had a book in me. <laughs> I didn't know what I wanted to do, actually, until I met my co-author. We talked, we had lunch, right, and we right. talked about it. We talked about some of the characters that I've played. They're really tough guys. Yeah. They had loyalty, and they have respect. So they really were men's men in a certain way. So we had our lunch, and then we left the restaurant. Mm -hmm. And as we left the restaurant, a guy pulled up in a van. He said, Frank, he said, you're the man. And I said to him, there's a sign. Let's write the story about a man's man. And, and in the book, you, you cover popular topics such as dating, movies, music, food, cigars, clothes, Vegas, and much more. And, and in defining a man's man, you said he's honorable, he's loyal, he's sensitive, he's tough, uh, he's well-groomed, he has a sense of humor. And he takes care of himself, and he takes care of his lady. And that, that's, 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 that's pretty That's man's, man's 101. I, I guess so. Now, most of the topics you cover with a lot of humor and tongue-in-cheek presentation, and I think that's what really makes it work. Yeah, because you can't get too serious about the subject. I mean, the subject is important, but it's not uh, brain surgery. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So, so we try, I, we, the hardest thing about writing this book was finding the voice. You know, the voice, mm -hmm. to, to write my voice, in, in uh, relaying the information, and so we that was a tough part. We had we did it, and it, and it, we did it in a comedic way. They, they, the, my co-writer is ex excellent, Stephen Purget. I just want to go over the, the, what I felt with one of, some of the more funny lines in the book. One especially, my favorite regarding dress. You said every man should own his own tuxedo. I agree. You said if you can't afford an eighteen hundred dollar Giorgio Armani tuxedo, it's okay to buy one within your price range. And here's where you got me. You said, however, get it fitted right. And then you went on to say, and this is a quote from you, if it doesn't fit properly at the next party, someone might ask you for the shrimp puffs. There's nothing worse than anything that doesn't fit. I mean, you can go to, uh, what's, what's the name of that store that they say, uh, 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 Educated Consumer? Sims. Uh, Sims. You can go to Sims, buy a nice suit. Sure. You get it tailored right, it look like a million dollars. And that's the key. A lot of guys go there, they put it on, they go home. 
And then when the next wedding comes up, they throw it on. Doesn't fit right. Okay, says, waiter, could you get me more water yeah. or something? <laughs>